welcome back to the Alcohol to Pain Point podcast. I am your host, Deb Maisner. I'm a registered nurse, health coach, and AFBA. That's Alcohol Free Badass. I wanted to come on the show today and record because today is January 1st, 2023, and this is my three year alcohol free anniversary. And I've just been reflecting a lot on the last three years and thought I would share some of what got me here and what keeps me here, what keeps me alcohol free and keeps me sober. So I obviously got sober in 2020 after many, 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 many starts and stops, many day ones. And I was actually just talking to a friend of mine about how I've kind of forgotten how those first days feel and how scary it was and how stuck I felt and how just miserable I felt. I, I was really in that shame spiral. I was really, really beating myself up because honestly, I... I've been trying to change my drinking for years and just never, never successful, never quite getting it. And the reason why I share some of that has faded is just to let you know if you're listening and you're trying to change your drinking, that it does get better. It really does. That you really can do this and and you won't feel so terrible and you won't feel stuck in that shame spiral you will get out of it and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Like the saying that this darkness is a hallway. It's not a dead end. So I just thought I'd share some of my journey, how I got here, and hopefully it will help you too. I don't really have this organized at all either. I'm just rambling. (laughs) Well, that's what I do sometimes. Anyway, so I did start drinking at a really young age when I was in junior high. I remember sneaking my parents and my friend's parents, Jack Daniels. We would water down their bottles of liquor and put them back in the liquor cabinet. I I don't know if they ever noticed, (laughs) but all of their liquor would end up being like 50% water, 50% alcohol. And... I just remember really liking the feeling right away and just wanting to keep doing it, wanting to keep drinking, wanting to keep finding that, finding that escape. And and it was a fun thing for me. It was fun. And it was what everyone was doing. I grew up in Moscow, Idaho. That's University of Idaho, which was a big party school. Also, we were right next to Washington State University, another big party school. And so in high school, it was partying partying with other high school students, but also partying with college students. I worked at my dad's restaurant, and we had a lot of college students there. So drinking was always around, and it's just what everyone did, so I thought. And then... You know, I even at that time, even in high school, I remember taking a class. I, I was able, because we were at the University of Idaho, I was able to take some college classes in my senior year of high school. And I took a psychology, intro to psychology class, and then I took an addictions class too. Because even then, I was very interested in alcohol, alcoholism. Did I have it? Did I not? Was it a disease? Was it not? And I remember I had to write an article about whether it was a choice or a disease. And I can't remember what I decided. I think I put disease. (laughs) And for me, I think always investigating the role of alcohol, of investigating alcoholism. And I'm just saying quote unquote, because now we don't use that term. We use alcohol use disorder and it's on a spectrum from mild to moderate to severe. But back at the time, that word, alcohol, alcoholism, alcoholic, 
that actually kept me really stuck and didn't move me forward because I would investigate it. Like, am I an alcoholic? Do I fall under that? Do I have this disease? Do I not? And I would find all this evidence that no, no, I, I was doing just fine. I was getting good grades. I was holding down a job. You know, everything was fine. Yes, I overdid it, but no, no way. I could not be an alcoholic. And so I share that just to let people know, like, you don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to have a problem with drinking. You don't have to have a drinking problem to quit drinking. Now we know so much more about the effects of alcohol on your health, on your physical health, on your mental health, that you can just stop drinking because it's a poison. It's a carcinogen and it's shit for your health. But at the time, I I was really in that mindset of people don't quit drinking unless there's something wrong with them, that there's something broken with them. And I just refused to acknowledge that there was anything broken with me. And it's interesting now as I reflect back on thinking about that, I, I do agree that there is nothing wrong with you you are not broken and alcohol itself is a very addictive drug it's a very harmful drug it artificially inflates all your dopamine levels and there's just so much wrong with the substance but for me what I really had to do was marry those concepts of yes alcohol is shit for your health And yes, it's my problem. It's my responsibility. I still have been choosing to drink. So what was so helpful for me, I remember reading Laura McCountain's book, We Are the Luckiest, and she has this statement of nine things that she has in the front of her book. And it says, it is not your fault. It is your responsibility. It is unfair that this is your thing. This is your thing. This will never stop being your thing until you face it. You cannot do it alone. Only you can do it. I love you. I will never stop reminding you of these things. I remember reading that in January of 2020 which as you recall, here we are three years out. And for me, that was, that was what clicked. That was how I could move forward. That it's unfair. This was my thing. And it would never stop being my thing until I faced it. And I think I I was finally able to accept that drinking no longer served me, that I, I couldn't moderate. If I could have, I would have. We say that a lot about moderation. If I could have moderated, I would have. But I didn't want just one. What is the point of one, honestly? (laughs) Even now I'm like, fuck that. No, I never wanted just one. I always wanted more. And so I just had to get to a point where I was just done with drinking. And I think for a lot of people, that takes time to get to that point. It really, really does because there, there's still something you get out of drinking. You know, you, you do get a buzz. You do get numbed out. You do get to tap out, right? And so once you're able to accept that you're not going to have that buzz anymore and that's okay because the trade-off is so much bigger, then you can move on. But I don't think that you get to that point until you give yourself breaks from drinking. I don't think you get to that point until you start to explore your relationship with alcohol. And you can do that by listening to these podcasts. You can do it by reading Quitlet. You can do it by joining a group. You can do it so many different ways. And you don't have to be perfect about it. And so I think that is what keeps people stuck. And I think that, I mean, I know that is also why I say practice practice not drinking you don't have to be perfect just see what it's like see what it's like just for today not to drink 
okay, see what it's like for a week not to drink. See what it's like for a month. You don't have to quit forever. I mean, there's no guarantee forever. I, I did hear Annie Grace talking about how she doesn't say, like, I'm done drinking forever, like, I'm done. And the reason why was because how would she know when she hit her goal? How would she know she would be dead? And so to me, I'm like, just for today, just for today, I'm not drinking. I feel more solidified in in my alcohol freedom and my sobriety. I I feel okay calling myself sober. I know that for a lot of people, that doesn't resonate with them. And that's okay. You just need to find what resonates for you. And so I, I think that the journey of getting to being alcohol free, I think I had to go through that to get to where I am now. I had to, I had to have those day ones again and again. I had to learn again and again that drinking wasn't serving me. And I had to unlearn all of the benefits I thought alcohol was giving me. You know, I, I thought that it was relaxing me. I thought it was making me more social. I thought it was reducing anxiety. And I had to unlearn all that. And that takes time. That takes a lot of time. I mean, I was drinking from when I was 13 until 42, 43. I don't even know. Guys, I'm 45 now. 45. What was decades, decades of drinking. And so it takes a lot of time to unwind that. I will say that once I started questioning my drinking and really questioning it and taking breaks and doing like the this naked mind and the alcohol experiment, then I I opened some door in my mind and I could never go back to normal drinking. I I could never drink with without consequences, without feeling like shit, without just knowing that it wasn't right for me. I could never go back to drinking normally. It was just like I knew too much. It, it was like ignorance is bliss in a way. And so once you open the door to like, is drinking no longer serving me, then there's no going back because the answer is usually always, yeah, drinking is not serving you anymore. And so what made it stick in 2020 is, is all those day ones, is all that practicing, is all that learning, all that reading. That's what led to making it really stick. I also got sober in the pandemic. And for me, that was a gift because there were no social events everyone was like holed up in their houses and I know that for a lot of people that's when they started drinking more and for me it was the opposite it for me it was easier not to drink because I had to be there for my kids I had to be there for the homeschooling quote unquote (laughs) I had to be there for work I mean you guys I work as a nurse it was kind of interesting because a lot of our area we're in Idaho the pandemic hadn't really hit then so we got furloughed and hours got reduced or we would just work the nursing call lines or just do alternative things because the kind of nurse I am I'm in corporate health and wellness and so we do health screenings and we do health coaching and Uh, wellness exams and things like that, well, those things got put on the back burner. Everything got put on the back burner, which which was good, which was really allowed me to protect my sobriety. And so I share that just to let you know, like, you can hunker down in your house and you can protect your sobriety too especially in those first days and weeks and months, whatever break you're giving yourself, it is really, really helpful to just take yourself out of those situations that are difficult, that are challenging. Those dinner parties, those birthday parties, those big events, what have you, like really make it easy on yourself. So the pandemic for me was a gift that way. So that I could really focus on just not drinking, just having alcohol freedom. 
And I also knew that I wanted to help other people. I knew that I could use my nursing, my health coaching, my years of education, just I feel like I have a PhD in Quitlet or addiction, whatever, just because it's been a lot of reading and a lot of discovering and uncovering. And so I I knew that once I got out, once I got on the other side, that I wanted to help people because I didn't want anyone to feel the way I did. And I'm so proud of the people that I have been able to help. I am in awe of you all. I, I'm so thankful for you for listening. I'm I'm so grateful that I get to help other people. This makes it all worth it. It really does. I have met some of the most amazing people across the world I never would have met before if I hadn't have opened myself up to this new world. And I know it's scary. Here we are at the beginning of January, and there's been a couple of messages about, wow, I don't know why, but I'm really scared to do this. I'm really scared to quit drinking. And I get it. I, I was scared to change too. And everything's scary until you do it, right? And scary, fear, that's actually the same kind of feeling as excitement for what's on the other side. And I can tell you unequivocally that on the other side of not drinking, it is so much better over here. I mean, it is, there's so much more energy I have and focus and just love for myself, honestly. I, I think that's a big thing is just learning to be more self-compassionate and learning to be okay with myself and okay with life on life's terms. And I can handle life so much better, so much easier when I'm here and present for it. So much better. I do want to share this poem about everything is scary until you actually do it. It's by Sonia Triggs Wharton and just happened to find it the other day and I think it's really helpful so it goes like this everything is scary until you actually do it remember how afraid you were the first time you applied for a job the first time you had to make a presentation the first time you spoke in public or do you remember your first date with your significant other how afraid you were when you contemplated getting married or having children if you had to do any of the above things, you probably were scared, nervous, afraid, maybe even terrified, until you did it. And if you recall correctly, it probably didn't turn out perfectly, but probably turned out all right. You got through it. You didn't make a fool of yourself. You lived to tell the tale another day. And you may have even tackled the same event or something even harder the next time. And you know what gave you the ability to do it? The fact that you did it the first time. You don't go from zero to 60 when you've never done something before. You go from zero to five, and then maybe five to 10. And then when you're feeling really confident from 10 to 20, and maybe then from 20 to 40, then 40 to 60, when you finally reached your goal, but you didn't get there overnight. And you probably had to overcome your fears to get there but you made it. You did it, and you lived to tell the tale. Just keep that in mind the next time you're presented with a new challenge that you don't want to do, and you feel scared, because everything is scary until you actually do it. I just think that's so powerful. You know, we don't go from zero to 60 the first time, but we start to get better and better. We go from zero to five. And then maybe five to 10, right? And that's what it's like when you quit drinking. Maybe you just quit drinking for one day and then it's three days and then it's four days, you know, and then it's a month. And then before you know it, maybe you'll have three years like me. So I want to thank you all 
for listening, celebrating this milestone with me. I, I know that you can change. I really do. I believe in you. I know that you are worth it. And I want you to know that drinking doesn't make you bad and not drinking doesn't make you good. You are a good person no matter what. If you're drinking or not, you are inherently good. You are worthy. And you can do this. You can do hard things. So I am over here rooting for you. Please reach out if you need anything. You can email me, deb at alcoholtippingpoint.com. And I just want to thank you again for listening and being part of my journey. And I wish you all the very, very best. And I'm holding up a heart. This is what we always do at the end of our meetings is we make that heart, (laughs) the heart symbol with our hands. So I am just sending you lots and lots of love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Alcohol Tipping Point podcast. Please share and review the show so you can help other people too. I want you to know I'm always here for you. So please reach out and talk to me on Instagram at Alcohol Tipping Point and check out my website, alcoholtippingpoint.com for free resources and help. No matter where you are on your drinking journey, I want to encourage you to just keep practicing, keep going. I promise you are not alone and you are worth it. Every day you practice not drinking is a day you can learn from. I hope you can use these tips we talked about for the rest of your week. And until then, talk to you next time.